So let me now revisit and uh, um, look at uh, what we have been talking about earlier and why we started looking at this uh, positive real transfer functions and so on. So the reason why we started looking at these positive real transfer functions is first of all there was this Eisenman conjecture and uh, from the Eisenman conjecture uh, a certain guess was taken that you know if you have a non-linearity in some certain sector and you um, have a feedback connection of that non-linearity with a linear system uh, then uh, if that linear system with those particular gains gives you a stable uh, uh, closed loop system then the uh, linear system with the non-linearity in that loop uh, will give you a stable system and then we also saw that uh, counter examples were given so Eisenman's conjecture is not correct. Uh, now after that uh, we came into this passive systems and what these passive systems are and we have a, a lot of results with uh, respect to passive systems. Now the important thing about passive systems is that um, if you interconnect two passive systems, I mean if you have a feedback connection of two passive systems, then the resulting system is also passive. And this makes uh, things very, um, very good because uh, what, what one is really saying is if you start off with some system which is passive and you have another system which is passive and you interconnect the two the new system that you get which is the interconnection of the two systems is also passive and uh, this uh, I mean especially if you think about this passivity in terms of the energy uh, that means um, the passive system is something where the total amount of energy supplied is either dissipated or uh, it goes to increase the stored energy then this uh, seems very natural. Uh, but what we will now do is we will formally show that when you interconnect two passive systems the resulting system turns out to be passive. As a result it turns out that this concept of passivity is something that goes a long way in answering the question raised by Eisenman and in fact providing an answer which is similar to what Eisenman guessed. Okay, so, so let me begin by first talking about the, mm, uh, the dilemma or uh, the theorem, okay, uh, might as well call it a theorem. Interconnection of two passive systems. is passive. Okay. Uh, okay, so what do I mean by this interconnection? Okay, so let me assume this is system 1, mm, let me call it G1. So let me call the input U1 and uh, the output Y1. And let me have a second system G2. So, uh, okay, input, you see when you are talking about input and output, uh, one needs to probably draw an arrow so that it is clear what is the input and what is the output. So, u1 is the input and uh, y1 is the output. Hmm? And let us have another system g2 and uh, this system has u2 as the input. And y2 as the output. Now g1 is passive, what does it mean to say g1 is passive? Well uh, one, uh, one thing that from all the discussion that we had about passivity is that u1 y1, let me say u1 transpose, so uh, rather than think of it as single input, single output, I could think of it as uh, multi input, multi output. So I am saying y, u1 transpose y1 is greater than equal to v1 dot where this v1 
is the storage function of the first system. Okay, so, uh, we had said that for the passive systems, the product of the input and the output is greater than or equal to the rate of change of the storage function. So, so V1 uh, is like uh, the amount of energy stored in G1 uh, roughly and uh, so U1 transpose Y1 is like the amount of energy supplied and uh, oh, the energy supplied is greater than or equal to the rate of change uh, or the power supplied is greater than or equal to the rate of change of um, uh, the stored stored energy in the first system. Now, this one being uh, passive, essentially you have a similar statement u transpose y 2 must be greater than or equal to v 2 dot yeah? and this v 2 dot is the storage function of the second transfer function. Okay. Now, let us look at what we mean by interconnection. So, let us interconnect it in the following way. So, I put in this this thing and uh, I will assume that there is some input E 1 coming into the net system and maybe I subtract this. So, what this essentially tells me is that U 1 equal to E 1 minus Y 2 and I do a same kind of thing here. So, there is some input here which let me call it E 2. Now, of this system, this is the interconnected system and in this interconnected system, I can think of the vector E 1 E 2, the vector E 1 E 2 as being the set of inputs. Okay? And I can continue to think of y 1 and y 2 as a set of outputs. So, then input times output is essentially E 1 y 1 plus E 2 y 2. Now, for E 1, if I substitute U 1 plus Y 2, so I get U 1 plus Y 2 times Y 1 plus, now oh, I have not written the equation for this. Here, this I would continue to call it positive. So, what I have is U 2 is equal to E 2 plus Y 1. Okay. So, this E 1 y 1 plus E 2 y 2 is equal to U 1 plus y 2 times y 1 and for E 2 I can substitute E 2 is U 2 minus y 1. So, U 2 minus y 1 times y 2. Of course, there are these transposes, but uh, that really does not matter. Now, you see you, you have a y 2 transpose y 1 and you have a y 1 transpose y 2, but with negative signs. So, they sort of cancel. So, what you are left with is u 1 transpose y 1 plus u 2 transpose y 2, which from these two inequalities you know is greater than or equal to v 1 dot plus v 2 dot. Now, what does this mean? This means that if you take this E 1 and E 2 as the inputs for the interconnected system and the Y 1 and Y 2 as the output. So, for this interconnected system, when you look at the inputs multiplying the outputs, this is greater than or equal to the rate of change of a storage function, which is in fact the sum of the storage functions of the first one and the second one. So, in physical systems, if this was a physical system and it had some uh, elements which stored energy and this is another system which has some elements which is, store, which is storing energy, then the complete storage function is the sum of this storage function plus this storage function. Yeah. So, now this is an extremely powerful uh, sort of um, uh, result. And uh, therefore, I mean what we can say is if you have two systems which are passive and you interconnect it, then the interconnected system continues to be passive. 
Now, um, if I mean how this uh, this theorem becomes really powerful is the, is by the following means. You see, suppose you think of this G one, this system G one, as a linear system which is passive. G two is some system which is let's say a non-linear system, but you can sort of uh, by some method means show that this is passive. Then, if you interconnect these two, then the interconnected system is also passive. So, if this was a non-linear system and you manage to find some storage function for this non-linear system, then in some sense you have found a storage function for the complete non-linear system. Now, if you are talking about, for example, um, Lyapunov theory, and uh, so you don't think of these inputs. Uh, earlier we had discussed how given a general um, general nonlinear equation you can split it up into a linear part and a nonlinear part and now if you can show that this linear part is passive and this nonlinear part is passive independently and for this nonlinear part you can find some storage function for the linear part, of course, we already have the positive real lemma and the kalman yakubovich popov lemma by which you can find storage function. Then, the sum of these two storage functions act like the uh, storage function for the net system, but with zero input, the sum of the two storage functions would act like the Lyapunov function and therefore, this is in, in fact a way to construct a Lyapunov function for that particular system.